The ocean has been around for eons, continually swaying and flowing as time continues. Once we humans arrived, the ocean played a large role in our daily lives. Not only did the sea provide a place of respite, but it was also home to much of the life on Earth. Over the years, humans advanced and began to exploit the different resources of the world, one of which was the sea. Now the ocean has begun to change. Specifically here, we will assess coral reefs, which are once a place of immense beauty and are now being threatened with extinction. In the past century, and even decade, the problems reefs face are becoming all the more prevalent. Now with the advancement of humankind, we need to find ways to live in harmony with the ocean and all of the resources it provides. This will help to mend the problems our actions have exacerbated. In the past, coral has always been a highlight of the sea. They are a fascinating and unique organism that is not only alive, but also provides a sanctuary for other animals. The beautiful colors bounce off one another, creating an exciting and eclectic landscape overflowing with marine life. Such a place brightens the lives of sea creatures and humans alike. Across the globe, these vast coral ecosystems support most of the life in the ocean, including fish, coral, and more yet to be discovered. In fact, as we discover more species in these areas, we are unlocking possible keys to curing different types of ailments, including arthritis and even cancer. With no reefs, we would be lacking a vital resource that we rely on for food, tourist-based economies, and protection as a buffer against waves, storms, and floods. Lately, however, human activity has led to changes in the climate that are negatively impacting coral reefs and the water that surrounds them. As one of the most diverse ecosystems in the world, millions of species rely on the health and well-being of this ecosystem. Fishing has been a part of everyday human life for hundreds of thousands of years. During the majority of these years, humans lived in balance with the animals in the sea, never taking too much to ensure healthy populations in the future. But now, overfishing is a huge threat against the diversity coral reefs are famous for. This is because industrial fishing ideals encourage practices that ravage populations to result in immediate payoff for fishers. Methods like bottom trawling are amongst the most destructive. This entails a massive weighted net being hauled along the ocean floor, obliterating everything in its wake. Many of these scars will take decades, even centuries to heal, if they ever do. Habitat destruction is not the only threat common industrial fishing methods pose. Nets that are deployed to catch fish will also scoop up additional animals that are not the initial target. Accidental bycatch kills millions of animals a year. To avoid the collapse of the world's fisheries, we need to work on implementing wide-scale sustainable fishing practices in order to ensure the health and longevity of fish populations and coral reef ecosystems. These methods are not new and have actually been around for thousands of years. Take, for example, the Tagbunua people in the Philippines who have a balance between catching and maintaining fish populations. These methods include fishing for certain species only at certain times of the year to avoid collapsing the population and allowing them time to naturally replenish. In addition, the Tagbunua people have set aside certain areas, like coral reefs, in which fishing is prohibited. The tools they use to fish are also vastly different from the commercial instruments many fishers now use. Tagbanua people use primarily hook and line methods in order to catch only what they need to support themselves and their community, and not more than that. Though overfishing is a major problem facing coral reefs, pollution is much more concerning. This contamination comes from human sources including dredging, coastal development, agriculture and deforestation activities, and sewage treatment operations. These activities result in runoff polluting the ocean, especially coral reefs as they thrive so close to the shore. This runoff often contains chemicals, insecticides, oil, and more that negatively impact the environment that they end up in. Once in the water, these pollutants cause nutrient levels to increase, creating a rapid growth of algae, which smothers coral and other organisms in the area. This process is known as nutrient pollution and leads to what we know as dead zones, or areas in the ocean in which nothing is able to survive, leaving a biological desert in its wake. Cyanide fishing is another form of pollution devastating many reefs. This method uses cyanide to stun and kill fish. But for every single fish caught using this method, a square meter of coral is killed. 
If we are to let such extensive pollution continue, we will lose the bountiful wreaths many of us rely on. In order to overcome the destructive powers of pollution, there are a variety of things that we can do at home. This includes limiting or abandoning chemical fertilizers and pesticides, and instead opting for naturally derived ones, picking up after our pets and overall making sure waste goes to the appropriate spot, as well as disposing of household chemicals like antifreeze in the correct manner and not dumping them in storm gutters or street drains. If these practices become widespread, we will limit the runoff going into the ocean. Because of their vast beauty, coral reefs have been a long time favored spot for sightseeing in the ocean. It is a wonderful way for us to experience such a diverse ecosystem in real life, but it can also be extremely harmful. Tourism in these areas can lead to trash and water pollution disrupting the natural environment. While folks may want to learn from the reefs, they can also end up trampling and destroying coral when they scuba dive and snorkel. Boats depositing tourists at the reef can also break coral when they anchor and even spread invasive species, further unbalancing the diverse ecosystem. In addition, because of people's love and adoration of coral reefs, many decide to make a similarly eclectic environment in an aquarium or craft jewelry made from coral materials. When these products are collected, however, it destroys large swaths of the reef that take a decade or more to recover. Thus, these purchases should be avoided in order to protect the conservation in these areas. In addition, tourists going to the reef in person can be more mindful when interacting with the ecosystem. Take care not to touch or step on the coral, even though it may be enticing. You can also be careful to anchor away from the reef to avoid further destruction. Coral reefs are a beautiful and vital place for life on Earth. They provide a diverse sanctuary for many marine species as well as a place of relaxation for us. They are, however, being threatened by a host of problems including industrial fishing practices, pollution, and destruction from mining and tourism. But there are practices that we can implement to limit the impact that we have on this ecosystem. This includes engaging in sustainable fishing methods, reducing land-based pollution, avoiding purchases of items that may have been mined from a reef, and touring your local coral in a mindful way. Therefore, we are going to save the coral reefs as long as we work together.